Ciao. Hi, everyone. Hi, ciao. Lydia. Ciao, ciao. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm the founder of Untold Italy Tours, podcasts and online travel resources. And I'm here to welcome you today to an overview of our Piedmont itinerary for spring. And joining me today is Olivia. Why don't you introduce yourself, Liv? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Olivia, living in Piemonte, so the region that we're going to be talking about today. I live in the capital, Turin. I'm originally from Australia, but I've been here for nearly three years, and I'm going to be uh, leading the Piedmont tour, uh, as well as some of the other amazing Untold Italy tours this year. So very looking forward to meeting you all and uh, helping you discover this amazing country. Absolutely. So what we thought we'd do today was really walk you through the itinerary so you really know what to expect when you're joining us on tour. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful part of the world and we'll um, throw up this uh, little slides with a little presentation for you. There we go. This is a beautiful vineyard, covered hills of Piemonte. How beautiful is it? Stunning. Absolutely swoon worthy. <laughs> And would you say this picture is an accurate representation of what, you know yeah, how sometimes yeah. Yeah. pictures can Absolutely. be a bit deceiving? <laughs> Absolutely, especially at springtime. It's really nice and green and, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. The only caveat perhaps is it depends. Piemonte has got lots of um, nebbia, we call it, so the fog. So there might be on certain days a little bit of fog, but it's all good, it's needed. It's where the nebbiolo grape comes from. So it's um, the only other characteristic. <laughs> <laughs> and does the, do the little hilltop towns poke above the, the yes. sort of mist? Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So shall we walk our friends now through the itinerary loop so they know mm -hmm. what to expect? Absolutely. Can't wait. There you oh. go. Perfect. So, um, yeah, just really quickly, day one, we'll arrive in Turin in time for a petit or and a delicious dinner. Day two, it's all about exploring Royal Turin. So we'll have the entire day and a night here um, and, of course, get into some of its tastiest treats. Day mm -hmm. three, we're off to Lalange. So we're going for a morning truffle hunt, followed by, of course, pasta and a good dose of wine. Day four, we're going to get roll up our sleeves, put our aprons on uh, and do a cooking class, learn some traditional recipes and visit beautiful Alba, which is the capital of Lalange. And then our final day, um, we're ending with a bang. We're discovering an amazing fairy tale castle in the vines. And, you know, of course, we're going to have another glass of Barolo wine. Mm, amazing. I mean, Piemonte is like the region for foodies, isn't it? And, and yeah. people that love wine. It's just, you know, it's got the ultimate ingredients. It's got the ultimate wine. It's got all those ingredients. Plus, mm. these beautiful, beautiful scenery. And it all starts in amazing amazing royal touring so let's yes. uh, give you a little bit of a deep dive into what to expect perfect yeah so this is um Turin, of course so everyone will be arriving in the afternoon you'll have time to settle in at the hotel we're staying in a beautiful city center hotel um and then we're going to meet for an aperitivo and we're going to do it as the Torinese do so that means we're going to be having vermouth which is a specialty of Turin. So you will choose from either red vermouth, white vermouth. Uh, and because Italians never drink on an empty stomach, we'll, of course, be pairing it with, uh, with something to eat. So we're going to have a tramezzino, which is a Torinese sandwich um, filled with delicious fillings. My favourite is with the truffle or maybe the robiola cheese. Uh, so we'll nibble on that in a beautiful historic uh, bar in, in the city centre. It's just, yeah, it's lovely. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, and after we do that, we're going to take a, a short walk uh, through Turin off to our dinner again in a another city centre restaurant. Um, and we're going to start to slowly settle in um, with a glass of wine and some of these delicious dishes that Piemonte is known for. Oh, that sounds amazing. And um, look, I think that what I love about Turin is it's in the foothills of the Alps, isn't it? So you can see yeah. in this picture, you can see the mountains in the background and it really is like that. And it's got a yeah. really different feel to some of the other cities a lot of people mm. may have been to. And it's like it's very grand, I think. I've, yes. I've always found Turin quite grand. Mm. Very grand, very elegant. It reminds me a lot 
of that sort of Parisian vibes because of the architecture as well. But then you've got the Alps, so it is unique to itself as well. Divine. Okay, let's go on to day two, which is discovering more of its delicious food. <laughs> yeah, so day two we are yeah diving headfirst into you know the culture of terrain so we're going to start with a uh, morning after our delicious breakfast of course we'll have a morning walk uh, off to the market so Porta Palazzo is the main market of terrain and it's the biggest open air market uh, in Europe actually so we'll have a little wander through some of the stores um, I'll take you to some Kilometre Zero producers so that means that um, it's all that slow food here in, in Turin and Piemonte um, and these are producers that essentially kilometre kilometer zero means that it's produced locally, all of their food um, and produce. So we'll have a little wander there um, and then we'll probably be getting a little bit peckish by that point. So we're going to set off to a nearby historic cheesemonger to, of course, taste some of these amazing cheeses that Piedmont is famous for. Um, if you have heard my episode with Katie on the podcast about cheeses, uh, then you'll know some of the ones that we'll probably be trying in um, in Turin, but absolutely a Toma uh, will be involved. That's probably the most famous cheese in Piedmont and the most uh, typical, but there'll be a suite of others um, that you'll be able to, to nibble on. I do love my cheese, Liv. <laughs> cheese is very important. It's a very important uh I think it's a food group on its own, really, isn't it, Chief? It's just thinking the same thing. You read my mind. <laughs> oh, okay. And then, you know, because when it's not just about food and wine, although it is, there is a lot of that happening, but um, we also want to make sure that you see the city of Turin because it is a very beautiful city, as we mentioned before, and it's got a lot of royal connections. Yeah. And so, Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, after after that, there is a little bit of time for some free time because yeah, we want to be conscious to give you a little bit of time to explore by yourself um, rather than be packed, packed, packed with activity after activity. But then we'll meet again in the afternoon uh, and we're going to be uh, hooking up with a, a, a local guide. Um, so someone who can tour us around this beautiful city fill us in on um, all the interesting stories that really bring the city to life. So what will that include? It's a walk through the city centre. Of course, we'll be going to have a look uh, at this, as you can see on the screen, beautiful royal palace and we'll wander through into the gardens. Um, if you want to visit the palace, you can do that during the free time as well. It's very stunning, of course, but there's a lot to take in. So we'll be covering out yeah, all the city centre um, we'll be going into my favourite chocolate store. Um, again, if you've heard me talk about Humonte, you know it's famous for chocolate. So it would be remiss not to include a stop um, at this chocolate store. Uh, and then, you know, we'll be finishing up our lovely tour with, again, chocolate um, in the form of, here we go, this drink called the Picherin. Um, what is it? It is like a coffee chocolate drink topped with cream. Now, you don't stir the bitcher in. Um, they're very strict. They tell you don't stir it. You drink it because it's perfectly sort of um, composed, I guess, that you get a taste of the cream first followed by like the shot of the coffee and chocolate. And it's very decadent. It's very rich, but it's very torinese. So we just have to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think it's got all the other food groups in there as well. <laughs> Cream, <laughs> chocolate and coffee. <laughs> and sometimes you can um, put a shot of the cure in it as well if anyone's up for that too. <laughs> oh, why not? I mean, like, as we say, go hard or go home. Like, you might as well. <laughs> what sort of liqueur, liqueur would they put in there? Um, it depends. I think you can get a different range of, um, like, you, you could put grappa actually. Um, otherwise, yeah, maybe like a Kahlua or Frangelico, um, or you can do it with that. You can just have the, the coffee hit and the chocolate hit could be enough. <laughs> I reckon I'll probably be buzzing around to read <laughs> yeah. um, one of those. <laughs> but we have to go to bed um, and have a good night's rest because the next day it's going to be super fun too, right? So when yeah. when we wake up the next day, we're going out of Torino and where are we going? We're going to meet this little pup like this. 
Exactly. So we're heading off to Lalange the next day. Um, so Lalange is the heart of the wine region in Piemonte. It's UNESCO heritage, um, and it's yeah probably my favourite place in this region. We are going to La Mora, is the town that we'll be based in, um, and there we'll be going um, to a winery where they also run truffle hunts. So they've got their own forest, I guess we can call them, woods. Uh, yes, and we'll be meeting the truffle dog and searching for those truffles. So even on the spring tour, it's not white truffle season yet, but we'll be hunting for um, just as delicious black truffles. They're different um, to the white ones, but they're still very tasty. Uh, and so truffle hunt's really, really fun. Um, I encourage you also wear maybe some clothes that you're comfortable getting a little bit muddy or some accurate footwear maybe some boots because it could be a little bit muddy underfoot but it's all worth it because you know we'll be getting the truffles um so yes yeah, so that's going to be really exciting it's really lovely to see how that happens the truffle dog the relationship between yeah the truffle dog and the truffle owl which is the truffle hunter yeah and and this is you know such a prized ingredient and mm. i think it's hard to describe just how important uh, just the, the sort of rituals and the culture are about, you know, getting the truffles. It's not like yeah. it's a mass uh, frenzy to go out and like grab truffles out of the ground because if you do, you're going to destroy them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You really need the dog. The dog's the only one that can sniff them out um, of the earth, which is incredible when you think about it. Yeah, and you don't want the dog to be sort of crunching into it, <laughs> I'm sure. So, no, I mean, no, I yeah. think, you know... <laughs> <laughs> this stuff's pretty priceless. It's almost some of it's more Ooh, expensive yeah. than gold, so <laughs> you want to be pretty yeah, careful. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you, now, it, I mean, this is an amazing ingredient. So I hope we're going to try it. Liv. Is that is that part of the agenda? <laughs> Of course, you know it, definitely. So we'll be, um, yeah, definitely enjoying truffles throughout this tour. So whether they're shaved on top of your pasta like this. So this is the tallarin, which is a um, another traditional pasta shape of the region. Um, also, we'll be trying truffles perhaps over another dish called batuta al cotello, which is like the raw meat, if you're into that. Um, or there's another pasta as well, the Agnolotti al Plin, um, which will be, you know, having some shaved truffles over that as well. So it's going to be truffles galore um, at that winery as well. We're going to be doing, of course, a tasting. Um, so there's the Barolo, which we'll be trying. And, uh, you know, obviously the magical views that you saw on the very first slide of the presentation as well. Yeah, amazing. And of course, the Barolo matches perfectly with these truffles and the and the pasta too. And it and it's a very, you know, it's not a very complex dish in terms of like how it's made, but it's um uh, it's probably I would say it's pretty complex in flavors and it matches yeah. the complexity of the wine. But um, you know, when it's a powerful combination and just goes to show how many it's really it's simple and it's got a lot of mm. simplicity but it's also complex so i just i love this yeah. kind of juxtaposition it's really yes. cool yeah <laughs> yeah exactly but you know we're not just going to eat pasta though are we because yeah, i think it's very important to come home with a good souvenir and i can't think of a better souvenir actually than a skill that you can um share mm -hmm. with your family and friends or even i, I don't want to say show off but um you know they will love it and so you'll probably <laughs> have a few repeat uh asks back for dinner okay <laughs> but I we're going to be <laughs> Yeah, so of course they're going to be learning how to make these dishes as well because, yeah, as Katie said, it's something really nice when you can go back home and take a little part of Piemonte there with you um, and introduce the region to people who, you know, haven't been on the tour. Uh, so, yeah, so we're rolling up our sleeves. We're going to another beautiful winery um, where they run cooking classes uh, and it'll be just our group and we'll be learning how to make, yeah, either the tallarin or the agnolotti al plin, which are two typical pasta dishes of this region and you can't find them here we go the agnolotti you can't find them in other regions um, of Italy either they're you know native to Turin uh, Piemonte rather the region <laughs> and what are these little parcels of goodness they look amazing what's inside so normally they're filled with a roast um, beef filling uh, and some vegetables as well some parmigiano um 
but we can do also for vegetarians. So don't worry if you're vegetarian coming on the trip, we can also have an option for you. The best thing that I like to pair them with though, you can see um, the shape of the plin, they're sort of like a little, they've got like a little pocket um, and that's really delicious because the sauce catches in that perfectly. And it's just, oh, it's so yummy and Moorish. Um, we traditionally have these, there's two ways. My favorite way is with a roast beef sauce enriched with butter of course Piedmontese are a region that is really big on the butter and the cheese and the dairy um so that is so yummy um or the other way that they normally have it is in like a brodo so a um like a hot um veg uh, a hot beef uh, stock I guess you would yeah, say a broth a broth, exactly. I'm forgetting my English now. <laughs> <laughs> Brodo, broth, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's obvious when I say it. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, well, I mean, that just sounds amazing. And have you, are you, are, do you, have you learned to make these before, Liz? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So we made them at Christmas time, actually, because um, the annual of the Alpine is, yeah, traditional uh, dish that you'd have as part of the Christmas feast. Uh, it's not just the pasta, but many other courses. So, <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, it's, I think um, they're a little bit more fiddly to make than the tallarin because you have to do the stuffing, but it's so rewarding. And the, the other thing that's really nice is if you make it in a group, you know, many hands make light work and it's just, yeah, it's really fun. Um, so we'll all be making it together and then we'll all be sitting down, of course, to enjoy um, the, the pasta at the winery as well with matched wines and there'll be some other courses as well. We won't just be having pasta, don't worry. We're not letting anyone go um, on an empty stomach. <laughs> <laughs> There's all right. no such thing. Oh, dear. That looks amazing. You know, I think just just when you get those little pockets of just yummy, like just to bite into them and you get a burst of flavour. Oh, my goodness. So good. So good. So good. So good. Okay. And then because, you know, we do need to, you know, get on our, onto our feet a little bit as well, yeah. that we are going on that afternoon, aren't we, into do a little bit of a walk. We sure are. So, yeah, we're going to go out to Alba. So Alba is the yeah, home of truffles. Um, this is where they hold the International White Truffle Fair of Alba every year. So that's um, that will be happening on our autumn or fall tour. Um, but we'll still be visiting Alba on the spring tour. It's the capital of La Langa region. So um, it's still a small town, but it's the biggest town in the region. Uh, and it's definitely worth a visit. We'll also be meeting up with a local guide. So she'll tour us through um, this beautiful town as well. And again, just animate the town for us, bring to life um, all the stories, the history of the town, which I think is really important to know a little bit of that. It all just sort of comes together, you know. By that point, we would have had many tastes of the region. We would have been to Turin. We would have um, had some of the chocolate. We would have done a cooking class. We would have experienced truffles. And so I think um, this trip to Alba just was sort of bring it all together for us and help really start to, um, you know, just round out the whole story of the region. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to visiting Alba with everyone. Yeah, it's such a cute little town, lots of cobbled yeah. streets and little yes. piazzas and the tower. Oh, yes. So yeah. romantic. I love these little places. It, they're the, it's really these type of places that I re remember and recall yeah. the most. I feel yeah. like, um, you know, I do love the big cities, but, yeah. you know, something just something stirs in your heart, doesn't mm -hmm. it, when you're, when you're totally. wandering around little streets like this and you might duck into a shop and say buongiorno mm -hmm. and, like, you know, they're all very friendly and they, they're curious as to why you're there because, you know, in these areas they don't tend to get so many tourists or visitors from outside of Europe. I would say that they probably get a lot of European visitors, yeah, but yeah. not so many English-speaking visitors. So yeah. um, I think it's a very special and unique um, experience for, for everyone, actually, the locals mm -hmm. and, and for us too. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree. Mm, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on our final day, we're going to go to... Da, da, da. Yeah, so we're ending with a bang. So... Um, 
if you yeah if you don't know Piemonte has a royal history so obviously we've just seen the palace in Turin um, but there are all these other castles throughout the region and honestly like there are so many um, we could almost do a separate just Katie a, a separate castle and palaces tour of Piemonte if you know people are into that because there really are so many but yeah we're going to go to this beautiful one Grinzain Cavour um, and it's yeah I mean just look at it it's a fairy tale castle I think it's nestled in amongst the vines uh, so that's why we picked this one but there, yeah there really are so many beautiful ones so we're going to go uh, and check out the castle uh, wander through the vines um, and then yeah we'll have a final delicious lunch together in a very special town in the Lange. It's one of the um, Borghi più belli d'Italia. So that means the one of the most beautiful towns in Italy. So there's actually like a, a register or a list of all of these towns per region. And the town that we're going to go to, Neive, is uh, yeah one of those most. I don't know who makes this because, you know, I think it would be very hard to narrow down the, the most beautiful, but this one makes the cut. And, yeah, I do have to say it is one of my favourites. It is very, very beautiful. And the restaurant we'll be eating at um, will be eating outdoors. And they've got all these beautiful, yeah, here we go, all these beautiful um, uh, vines over the, the outdoor, of, like the ivy, rather, over the outdoor oh, of the building. Right. Yeah, it's just so pretty um so yeah we'll be having some barolo uh, and i forgot to mention before that we'll be doing a final winery visit as well because you know we're, we're, we're in barolo we're in piemonte we have to get a final winery visit in <laughs> oh that it, look it just sounds amazing and you, you know what it's a it's a five-day tour it's not a really long one and what we wanted to do with this tour was really give you a taste it's sorry about the pun there um but a taste of the region because i think yeah. people um this one's a really good one because and i guess this is how i would handle it is if you were flying into like milan and you wanted to do a trip to northern italy what you could do mm -hmm. is like you know, duck over to Venice and maybe Verona and Lake Garda or something for a week and then yeah. you can head on over to join us in Piemonte yeah. and then, like, spend your last two days in Milano or Lake Como or, yeah. or somewhere like that. And because it's so easy to get from Milan to Torino, isn't it? Yeah, it's so easy. It's just a really quick uh, one-hour train ride. Mm. easy and you don't need a car if you're coming with us because we'll get you around everywhere that's the other thing like if you wanted to explore the countryside you just can't do it without a car it's just be really inconvenient so yeah this also saves you the hassle of having to drive navigate the roads um in a foreign country too yeah, and if you're wanting to taste the wine, then someone has to probably oh, go the wine tasting. <laughs> exactly. And let me say that you don't want that to be you. We you don't want to miss out on the wine tasting, yeah, for sure. So, look, that's our Piemonte itinerary, and you can get all the details on our website at tours.untolditaly.com forward slash Piedmont. And we'd love to have you on tour at any time. Do feel free feel free to reach out to me or myself or Olivia. Um, Olivia can be found on Instagram at LivGuini, L-I-V-G-U-I-N-E. And I will be answering questions on the Untold Italy uh, Instagram. I've got a chat on the website. We, you can contact me on Messenger or you can even set up an appointment. And we'd love to hear your questions and any thoughts you had on the trip and whether, you know, we can help you with anything at all. Perfect. Can't wait. Sounds amazing. I know. Oh, cheers to that Barolo. Can't wait for that oh. one. <laughs> and the cheese. And the, and the cheese. cheese. And the pasta. And the, and the chocolate. <laughs> and the oh, oh, I forgot the chocolate. And the castle. And the vine. <laughs> oh, ciao, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Bye.